Guys, look at this. This was the first four-wheeler Yamaha came out with way back in 1985. So this is kind of the start of four-wheelers. I uh, picked this up on Marketplace for 250 bucks and she needs a little bit of help. Um, one of the big things I noticed was the uh, airbox was not hooked up to the carburetor and this thing's been sitting outside for a little while. So hopefully there's not motor or water in the motor, but it does turn over, I promise. So the crank can't be that bad, but I mean, really for the most part, it's all there. We got all the controls. We got the dash little pad here still. It's got the key in it. It's actually got some potential. I mean, it's definitely rough. I mean, it's a $250 four wheeler, but but I'm pretty stoked. Supposedly this thing needs a top end, but, uh, but I don't know that for sure yet. I haven't checked anything on this. So, I don't know, let's check the oil. Ew, you know, you'll have that. There's rust on the dipstick, so I'm assuming there's gotta be some moisture in here. But a lot of these things were uh, bulletproof, so we'll see how bulletproof it actually is. Got the, the good old side covers that aren't bolted on. Looks like we got a decompression release right here. Huh, maybe we'll throw a compression tester on this real quick and see uh, if it actually has any compression or not. Let's get the recoil on this thing and see if we can uh, test the compression on this to see if it if it's gonna show anything weird or not. Well, it doesn't tell me anything. It's got a brand new plug in it. start works well that's a cool bonus but uh we ain't got no compression we've got 80 84 82 pounds something like that well i might have to agree that it might need a top end while we're in here we might as well see if it's got spark and if the electric start works why not just crank it over with that right That's, that looks good. Got the jumper pack hooked up to it since the starter works and uh, just for shits and giggles, let's see if it will pop on some carburetor cleaner. So I think we're gonna we're gonna start taking all this apart. Let's see how bad the cylinder actually is. Of course, the second thing I want to take off of this thing is all stripped. That cylinder does not look good. That doesn't look too bad though. Well, other than the fact that uh, this looks like muddy water in here and it's all over everything, I would say actually it doesn't seem too bad. There's not really any, any play in the rod, but this thing is not very healthy. Pretty sure the plating's coming off. So this looks like more than just a, more than just a ring job. All right, so I ran into a little issue. <clears throat> when I was first looking up parts for these things, I didn't know what size this was because neither did the other guy. So I found out it's a 200, it says it on here. Come to find out, you can buy lots of cheap Chinese aftermarket cylinders for these Moto 4s. If it's a 225 or a 250 or a 350, you can find parts. The 200 is different, so um 
Another thing I can do is this looks like it's steel sleeved so I could get this punched out. So I looked on eBay and I can get an oversized piston as long as this one hasn't already been punched out. So when you look it up, they're always in metric. So what we're gonna do is a little conversion. We're gonna take our bore diameter times 25.4 and that's gonna give our, us our metric size. So I've got a set of calipers here. We're just gonna go in here, try to keep the calipers square with the bore. And it looks like we're at two inch, 600, and 40 thousandths. So let's write that down. Two inch, 640. Two inch, 640 times 25.4 equals 67 millimeter bore. This is just a Wiseco piston kit on eBay or on Amazon. Uh, it says it's a half a millimeter oversized to 67 and a half millimeters. So so this is a standard bore. So really we can send this to the machine shop, get it freshened up by an oversized piston and not have this thing all jerry-rigged to heck. So I might know a guy and I think we are gonna go get this punched out. I'm gonna order an oversized piston. I'm gonna get a gasket kit for this. And I think we're gonna get into this head a little bit and maybe relap the valves, maybe change the valve seals just to Kind of make sure she's good and fresh. I don't know if we should put a timing chain in this or not. It's got a little bit of play. I don't know. It's not a race wheeler and I don't want to tear all this apart. So I think we're going to leave that. New piston, new gasket set. Let's get this thing cleaned up. All right guys, so we got our gasket set in and uh, I had got my piston in. This is half a millimeter over, which is 20 thou. And uh, we sent this to the machine shop to get punched out. So it is beautifully machined and honed. So really there's gonna be almost no prep to this. I do wanna scrape a little more of the gaskets off. I got it cleaned up in the parts washer, but I didn't scrape anything before I sent to the machine shop. Uh, this O-ring here went over top of this and this groove in here. I uh, got this on Amazon, I'm pretty sure. I'll put, put a link for the piston down below. Uh, this, this cylinder is not plated. I don't do many steel sleeves just because a lot of the stuff is uh nicosil plated now it's actually kind of nice it cost me 50 bucks to get the get the cylinder punched took it to the local machine shop and it was done in a couple days so that all went pretty well got our new circlips got our piston our new wrist pin and our rings all right i think what i'm gonna do first is open up this gasket kit get everything laid out in an organized fashion and uh, then we're gonna go back over to the machine and pull out the old piston that's in it right now. All right, so I'm gonna try to do this with a camera and flashlight in the way. So we gotta get a circuit clip out so we can tap the pin out of here. A new one doesn't tap in, they should just slide in, but usually these old ones here, you need to persuade a little bit with a hammer. And there's this reverse shifter here on this side, so I don't really wanna pound it out that way. I kinda wanna pound it out this way because I can get a hammer on that side of the piston. So I'm gonna pop this circ clip out so I can get on this side and start tapping it out. I just have a rubber band on this, this timing chain guide just to keep it out of the way so you guys can see. But I'm just gonna use a pick and go in this little window right here and kinda try to get it wiggled out. All right, I got it started. If you drop this down in the motor, then then you're gonna start doing some fishing. So it would be bad if that falls down in there. So make sure you have that out. But now I'm gonna get a hammer and a punch and start tapping this pin out. That's actually one of the easier ones I've done. All right, these four strokes don't have any bearings in on the wrist pin. So we got that out of there. I'm gonna stick the rod all the way down to the bottom so I don't have to dick with it too much. Slide the timing chain down in there. I'm gonna take a rag and kind of pack in this hole to try to keep any of the, the gasket shavings out of the bottom end. It looks like there's an O-ring over here. Pop that out. And then I just take a scraper blade, kind of get under a corner. So we got this surface cleaned up, got the bottom there cleaned up pretty decent, and we got that cleaned up pretty good. Next step is we're gonna put the new piston on the rod. Um, how I like to do this 
is, all right, so there's an arrow right there that's gonna go towards the exhaust. So this piston is gonna go in here this way. Now I've got way more room on the wheeler on that side there than I do over here just because of that shifter and stuff. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna put this circlip in on the bench and then I don't need to try to put it in and risk dropping it down in there. So let's get this circlip put in and then put it on the rod. So I was gonna show you guys how I put that in there, but I forgot to press record. So you're not gonna get to see that. All right, so we got the circlip in on the side that we have the least amount of room to work on. We have our rings on. So we are going to put a little bit of oil in each side of this here, and then we're gonna dip our, our wrist pin in some oil. And then we're just gonna stick it over the rod, slide it in, and get this other clip put in. So I got oil on my wrist pin. I'm gonna stick the arrow here forward towards the exhaust. And then I'm just gonna kind of set it in here. And we're just gonna shove that in until it's past our little groove there for the circlip. And then we're gonna put the circlip in. So really, now we are ready to put the base gasket on, knock pins in, probably in the case with all the O-rings. And then we're gonna lube up the cylinder and slide it on. The gasket right here with a steel ring in it, that is gonna be our head gasket. So we're not gonna use that right now, but this is our base gasket. So I'm gonna go throw this on the motor quick. The next thing is I need to know where these knock, pin, knock pins go. So this is part Zella's website and I love them for all their, their pictures. So this is their home screen. I'm gonna click on Yamaha. I'm gonna go over here to ATV. This is a 1985 and it is a Moto 4. Now I'm gonna look for cylinder and it shows me a picture. So if you look on there, there's an O-ring, there's the pin, and then there's a line that goes up through it and it actually goes to that back corner of that gasket and then up into the cylinder. So in that back corner of the gasket, which is on the intake side away from the, the timing chain, that needs an O-ring with that pin. I've got just a pin here. It's not this one with the big wide O-ring. It's like one of these little round O-rings. Take that and then I've got a little cap full of oil here. I'm just gonna kind of swirl her around in there, get it looped up. Then we're gonna go drop it in the case. So what I'm gonna do is take my cylinder and I'm gonna put that pin. All right, this microfish is actually wrong. Um, only because if I look at the base of the cylinder here, this hole and this hole here are both drilled out for these pins. See how there's a, a ledge down in there, but this one and this one don't have that. So there's no way a pin can go in these. I don't have something small enough that'll actually work in there. So that knock pin goes in each one of these here, closest to the, the timing chain groove. This picture down here in the microfish shows the O-ring, a pin, one of these knock pins, and over there into that corner. That's not right, but the O-ring goes on that side over there because it goes over right over here in that little cavity. So we're gonna stick the O-ring there, but the knock pin is gonna go in both of these holes here. Now, on the bottom of the, the cylinder here, we need to replace this O-ring that we pulled out, and the Vertex kit did come with one of those. I'm gonna kind of wipe the oil off this surface and the surface on the crankcase because you don't want this surface to have any kind of oil on it. The gaskets kind of have like a gasket sealer built into it. So after you run a first heat cycle, the gasket sealer kind of turns liquidy a little bit and it melts and it sticks to these surfaces. That's why they're so hard to get scraped off because that stuff had liquefied and then stuck to the surface. And if there's oil in there, it might inhibit that uh, sealing. So we're gonna get that cleaned up a little bit, get all these surfaces dry. We're gonna take some oil and go inside this cylinder, kind of give it a little coat. If you didn't get your cylinder punched out to 20 over or you didn't get it bored, you would wanna hone it just to get some of this cross hatching in there that you see. Mine was punched and they honed it while it was there. So that is gonna be good enough. All right, we're gonna leave this other chain guide out of here for right now, but we have this chain guide in here. The timing chain is shoved down in the hole because we have enough room up above here for the magnet to reach down in and grab it. So we're gonna take our cylinder, kind of get it oriented the correct way. Make sure your rings haven't really moved. Your ring end gaps are kind of where they need to be. That looks good. So now we're just gonna do this one ring at a time.
All right, I think I have all the rings started. Here we go. I didn't talk much on that because I wasn't 100% sure on that. want to get that started down in the case all right sweet now this o-ring I want to make sure we don't pinch it when we get it down on there so I want to make sure it's actually down in that groove and there's not much of a groove I'm gonna to try to be a little extra careful on that all right it's started on both the knock pins on the other side all right, I think that's kind of what we wanted. All right, so now I'm gonna take the chain guide here and I'm gonna get it started. It goes in on this side here. Um, the side with the bigger ball on it, that one's got a pretty decent sized ball right here compared to this one. The bigger side goes down in the bottom and there's a little like U-shaped channel down in here on this side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this one back and then pull the chain out so I can get this one here fish down in. All right, now what I wanna do is I'm gonna stick these two bolts in so that the, that'll kind of hold the cylinder down and I'm gonna roll this over a couple times and make sure nothing's hanging up. All right, that's not very tight or anything. I just wanna be able to roll this over slowly. And that feels pretty good. I wanna leave this thing pretty close to top dead center just so that so it should be easier to time. We're gonna pull the plug out of the case here to actually make sure it's timed, but it should be pretty close. I am done with this, so we are going to uh, drop that back down in. So the next thing I'm gonna do is rebuild the head, put new valve seals and stuff in it. We've got the head here. What I wanna do is I wanna put new valve seals in it and I wanna relap the valves just because I'm doing a top end and the top end gasket kit came with valve seals, so we might as well dig into it. So first thing I'm gonna do is we got to take this like half moon looking cover off with these two bolts here and it looks like they're bent up on the sides here to help hold it the bolts from backing out so we're going to tap those flat so we can get a socket on here and get these bolts off Now, next thing I want to do now that that plate's off is there's these two pins here, and those two pins are the pivot points for the rocker arms on each side, and they're threaded by, I think is a six by 1.0 thread. I've got a bolt here. I'm gonna see if I can get it to pull up. All right, that was in there pretty good. Looks like there's an O-ring on there to seal it. All right, I'm gonna keep these separate. So I'm gonna have the exhaust side here and intake side here. Let's thread this bolt in. Oh, man. This one does have a little bit of a, like a flat head kind of ground into it. So I'm gonna grab a screwdriver and see if we can't get it to spin a little bit. All right, it's spinning. And here, here. All right, so it's easier to kind of break it free with a screwdriver. Another thing to notice is this notch here. I didn't pay attention, but I'm assuming it has to line up with that. So that's probably what the flat head is for. So when you get this slit in there, you can put a screwdriver in here and get that notch lined up, which it looks like it needs to be pretty much flat across. But there's our intake side. All right, now there's threads right here in the center of the cam. All right, so it looks like I might have to get the slide hammer out in order to get this tapped out. So it looks like this collar is what's holding it in. I don't know why I didn't think of it before, but the cam bolt, I just stuck the cam bolt back in it. Now I'm gonna get the, the slide hammer and hold on to the end of that bolt and just start tapping it out. That collar popped out. 
And it looks like this cam only comes out one way. Right there's the collar. So now we got the cam out of there. Yeah, the lifters out of there, or the rocker arms. Now our cam's out, so let's start working on the valves. Um, I'll have a link for the slide hammer and this next tool I'm gonna show you down below. They're gonna be uh, affiliate links, so if you guys buy from that link, it'll it'll help me. Oh, I'm kind of glad I tore this apart. I don't know if you can see that or not right there. But that is a flat spot on the cam. And that is not good. So this cam is just about wore out. It actually is wore out. I actually don't want to go any farther with this until I uh, go to find a new one. If you kind of look, it looks like it's kind of highest here and it kind of tapers off. Where that one's kind of a little more rounded. Even that's kind of starting to show a little wear on it. Kind of a lip on it there. Alright, well. I wonder if we can find a cam for this. But regardless, we are going to uh, tear the valves apart. Might as well see if those are any good. All right, this is the tool we're gonna end up using for the valves. And basically the way this works, is you attach that on there. These windows here give you room to get the keepers in and out. And this side here goes against the face of the valve. All right, so if you look at this tool, it's got a hold on the, the valve cap there, and it's pushing right on the center there. I'm going to kind of screw this in, and then I can just reach in here, pop the keepers out. Might have to kind of push it one way. All right, the keepers are out. I'm going to slowly loosen this up. Pull our springs out. Then we're going to push our valve down and out. All right, so all that was on the exhaust side. So I'm going to stick all this with the exhaust parts. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the other side. We can finally see our valve seals. Not really worried about crushing them. All right, now this head is pretty much completely stripped. I'm gonna pop the spark plug out of it quick and we are gonna scrape this gasket off and get everything cleaned up. All right, uh, I got this cleaned up. Um, I didn't realize it at first, but there's a little cup down on the bottom of where the valve springs go one of them fell out one of them fell out while i was cleaning it the other one didn't come out so i'm not going to worry about it too much but there is that part in there make sure you have it or you know about it so you don't lose it um this is cleaned up i got the valves kind of shined up on the wire brush with uh on the bench grinder so i'm not too worried about it i kind of got after it a little bit got all the carbon off of both the intake and the exhaust valve this intake valve's got kind of a little bit of like a corrosion ridge starting on it but we're going to lap these i'll show you guys how to do that so hopefully that's not an issue but i'm going to go back to the cam for a second because this is wore out i want to try to find another one partzilla and then this is a yamaha so i'm going to shop oem parts by brand so yamaha then atv it's a 1985 now this is a moto 4 yfm 200n i'm going to go to camshaft and chain all right now right there's the cam and it's got a little number one i don't know how well this is going to show up on the camera but it looks like they're still available for 85 bucks. So I could buy a brand new OEM one from Yamaha for 85 bucks. But I want to check eBay and see first. The easiest way to do it is we want to copy this part number here. So on a cell phone here, this is an iPhone, but in the description it says Yamaha with the part number and then camshaft. So I'm going to select all of this right here. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm gonna go into my uh, eBay and I'm gonna paste that in there, that part number, Yamaha camshaft, and then search for that. And then that'll show me, like these all should be exact fit camshafts and parts and stuff. 
all based off that number. So, I mean, looking right now, the top three are like less than 40 bucks, but they're all from China. And I don't feel like waiting that long. I'm not opposed to using a Chinese one, but uh, I don't really want to wait months for a cam to come in. So I just filter by in the US. And for a used one here, there's a guy asking 90 bucks. There's another one there for 90 bucks. I mean, I can buy a brand new one for 85, so, and it's not gonna be pre-owned. So I think that's what I'm gonna do is order a brand new cam for this. It's 85 bucks. I've already got the money in the top end for this, and I think this little quad's worth it. So I'm gonna end up ordering this camshaft on Partzilla. I'm not affiliated with Partzilla at all. I just, I just really like their website. So, it's helped me out. I'm going to end up ordering one of these and uh, we are going to finish up this. I'm going to show you guys the rest of it minus putting the camshaft in. So we got everything out and cleaned. I've got this parts washed about as best as I can. So what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, lap the valves. I think I picked this up at Napa, just valve grinding compound. What you want to do when everything's good and clean, you want to kind of set it so that it won't fall over. I'm going to work on the exhaust side first for no particular reason. I'm going to stick just a very little bit on my finger, just a little blob on my finger. And then we're going to take it and we're going to put it on this tapered surface right here. Just very lightly. It'll all kind of spread as we go ahead and do this but it's not gonna be useful anywhere else other than on this taper. So try to keep it all on that taper. It feels gritty, cause that's what's gonna literally grind these to a mating taper. So I've got these suction cup looking guys. I think I bought this kit at AutoZone or something. But basically what you're gonna do is find the biggest cup that doesn't spill over. You're gonna kinda Suction cup it. We're just gonna spin it around a whole bunch. Kind of some back and forth little jiggies. Kind of spin it all the way one direction a whole bunch of times. Back the other way a whole bunch of times. Just back and forth. If you just keep spinning it, it'll eventually push all the compound out of the two mating surfaces. So if you kind of pick up on it, It'll kind of introduce some more grinding compound to those surfaces. I'm not really pushing in a whole lot while I do this. Kind of just letting gravity do its thing, maybe a touch of down pressure. And it's not like I'm trying to push in on it while I'm doing it. I just want to let it cut its groove, cut its own path, and clean off the suction cup once in a while. You can kind of start to see a little bit of a silver ring start to form. That's what we want. I got this cleaned up. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to do this one more time and then we're going to call it good. All right. So like I said, that silver line all the way around is what we're looking for. There's also a silver line around this valve. That's where the two surfaces are going to actually mate and seal off. So I'm happy with that. That silver looks nice and even all the way around as I rotate it. So that is what we want. Now we are gonna do the same exact thing for the intake valve. All right, so I just lapped the intake too. The intake doesn't look too bad on the head. I've got a nice kind of gray band all the way around, but the intake valve looks like garbage. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this or not, but it's all it's not even all the way around. It almost looks like there's flakes in it and there's ridges everywhere. So like if you were to like drag your finger this way, there's like a, a burr stuck out there and same with the top out. So like this way here, there's a burr. So this intake valve is shot. So with a junk intake valve and a junk cam, I'm just gonna pause on this for a second. I got a new one of each of those coming. Once they come in, we are going to finish this bad mamma jamma up.